So we're on holiday at the Baltic Sea at the moment, at a nice little place called Dharma. There's a, a youth hostel here, which is very family friendly. And instead of a live stream, because in the common room where everyone's eating and talking, um, that wouldn't work out very well. So I've decided to pre-record a video for you and thought it'd be really cool to use some stuff that I've found on the beach. So here's a nice little fireplace where someone had a fire. We've got some awesome charcoal and uh, these kind of uh, beach eroded chunks of brick and I've got some really nice chalk stones here. Well, this is super overexposed. I uh, hope I'm going to be able to sort that out. But yeah, I've got these really nice white stones. That's a bit better. Yeah, so here's the nice white we've got. Got this nice red. It's a bit like ochre and some charcoal. And I'm just going to draw a portrait on a, one of these big rocks that are here. So this will be fun, just using some found objects to make some art with you. So this is going to be a, a fun little experiment. It's uh, um, out in nature, so the, the lighting setup is uh, it's going to be overexposed, underexposed, but I hope this is going to work out okay. I hope it's not too windy and the headset can pick up my voice okay. And I'd like to start with a few words from our wonderful muse, Stina. Um, and she's, she would like to share with us that everyone has a story to tell and everything you do ripples into the world around you in ways you can't even imagine. Be humble, be kind, don't judge, and take your time to look and listen. Thank you very much, Stina. That's beautiful. So now I'd like to introduce your wonderful face. So here is Stina. Uh, uh, just a, a lovely internet friend. Um, we, I think we met after a Drawing with France session uh, a few months back online. And Stina is from Denmark and I'm at the Baltic Sea. I'm kind of close to Denmark at the moment. So it's nice and fitting idea to, to draw Stina today. And I was wondering what am I going to use? There's so many cool nature materials here. And my kids had this piece of eroded brick and they were drawing on the stone and I was like yeah what can I use for the live stream uh, replacement because this is not live it's a recorded video for all of you uh, and Kira was like why don't you just draw onto the rocks with uh, charcoal and rocks and stuff so that's what I'm gonna do for you today I have yeah got a few pieces of uh, charcoal -y stuff here and this awesome chalk stone and I hope it's gonna work out and I'll be able to see Stina all right. And um, I might be getting in front of the camera a bit, but I'll try not to. And uh, maybe I can, yeah, I've pushed up the contrast a bit here because it's so bright here. I, but I hope you're going to be able to see it all right. And this should be a, a fun drawing session together. So I'll start with some charcoal from the fire. Um, and the eyes. And just as you would on in any medium, any paper, you know, you can just draw, draw wherever. Why not draw on a boulder at the beach? Seems like as good a place as any, especially using found materials. I just think it's so cool to collect some stuff at the beach and start drawing with it. I'll just check, yeah, just check to make sure this is all going to fit in frame. But I think we're... We're doing pretty good. Um, so this is a, yeah, holiday special. As the, the common room of the youth hostel is not going to be such a good place to do a live stream. There's lots of other people using the space and lots of other people using the internet. So this seemed like a really fun alternative. I like to keep sharing with you and keep creative on the road as well. And uh, yeah, this is taking the um, foraged art supply thing into another realm. Just finding stuff on the beach and drawing straight onto the beach with it. And it's, it's fun to draw big too. To, oops to break away from the sketchbook and uh, 
and just use the world as your canvas. So I've got this wonderful charcoal. Some people no doubt had a nice little fire at the beach and left behind this great charcoal for me. I hope I don't drop my iPad. And this is the, this whole stone is on a slant down towards the water. Who knows how long it's been here? I can wonder about these things. Did someone put these rocks here? Or was it just part of the... Has it been here for thousands of years? So just kind of figuring out the shadow shapes. It was interesting, uh, it was quite hard to see, so I, I adjusted the contrast of the photo, and that really exaggerates the, the shadows and, and does assist in the old squinting down trick, so you can really see what's in shadow and what's in light. Um, so that really helps out at the moment. to give me really clear shadow forms, which is great for drawing with charcoal. Oh, and I'm, I'm just so happy to be drawing Stina. Uh, we've become really good internet friends and she's uh, one of the Tuesday drawing session regulars and I just uh yeah she's also totally into making stuff from nature before the ink naturally class um she had also been doing natural dyeing of wools and knitting a lot and using natural dyes so it seems really really fitting to uh, be here on the beach drawing a friend who's also really into natural art supplies and just a generally a wonderful person. All right now I'm like kind of lying on the rock so this may change my perspective a bit and um, see what effect that may have in terms of skewing things I don't know. Hello. So yeah, this is a, I don't know, pretty fun idea, I think, um, to share something with you all and just to be on location and totally improvising. What can I do? How can I make art here? Oh, it's, uh, it's fun. This could be the start of many more spontaneous land art portrait sessions. And I was wondering about it, I was like, oh, you know, what if it gets really windy? It's gonna blow away my charcoal dust. Uh, what if it starts raining? It's gonna rain away my portrait. So it's like the, the ultimate uh, lesson in, in permanence here. Which is a beautiful aspect of uh, land art and making things in and from nature that they just you know, return to nature. All right, I think lying down on the rock has definitely skewed my perspective a bit, but that's okay. It's all, all fun. Um, maybe now I'll try some of this brick. Uh, so I hope nobody at home has a, an issue with the sound of stone grinding on stone. Yeah, I think I've been making the whole place. So. It's 
kind of a mid-tone, I guess. And I've got this cool chalk stone for highlights. That'd be cool. push the hair out of frame a bit. Maybe I'll just do a little adjustment so you're not missing any of the excitement. Get a nice shot of the tripod leg in there too. Just to let you know this is uh, not overproduced and and super spontaneous um, which I think is you know it's nice nice to see people just doing things I certainly have uh, sometimes not done things because I want wanted it desired it to be really polished and beautiful and that's still the case sometimes but it's just great to make something and not worry too much about production values and how perfect something is. Just have fun making things. Um, here I have my, my large chunk of charcoal. Oops, which is totally crumbling away. I thought, oh, and look, I've just blown her face away. That's okay, we'll come and uh, revisit <laughs> some of that later. Don't have to worry about the wind blowing away, I can blow it away myself. Forgot about that, I don't have any binder in here. My, um, my older son, Icon, has been collecting jellyfishes, jellyfish, and they're, they're already dead. They wash up on the beach, and then he's got this one collective jellyfish rock where he takes all jellyfish remains, and they just kind of dissolve. And on the way down, I was thinking, I wonder if that jellyfish goop could be used as a binder. Maybe. So far I have avoided using animal remains uh, in the creation of my art supplies. But it is certainly something available in abundance and given freely from nature here it seems. But I'll stick with the plant remains and stones for now. I haven't been explaining too much about the, I guess, my thought process as I'm drawing. Um, like how I'm drawing, what I'm looking at. There, there's this really strong perspective and the tilt of the head is really interesting to work with. Um, so it's good to see the eyes are kind of in alignment and then you've got the nose down here and not to yeah, avoid trying to straighten that up which maybe I've even done a bit with the mouth. But I can erase it. It's charcoal, it's all smudgy, it's not ink. Um, and just to try and get that perspective right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna 
kind of gap between the nose and upper lip, I always think is a super decisive place for getting a likeness right. Oh, and I notice here, another thing is like, where does the eye, the corner of the mouth line up with the eye? So maybe I can push this over a bit further here because it's not really in the right place. Maybe a bit like a street art artist doing uh, chalk drawings on the pavement. And it's just fun sometimes to draw big. If you haven't tried, I encourage you to try it. Instead of just moving with your wrist to, to get your whole body into the drawing. Maybe now I could try some of these, so, these nice chalk stones. Let's see if we get some highlights in here. Oh, it's super bright. Um, it's a bit, kind of a bit over the top, really. Oh well. I'm going to smudge that in a bit as well. A highlight in the eye. And it's, it's interesting when you're looking at highlights and filling in highlights because it's not the entire light side of the face, which is a highlight. So I already have a pretty light mid-tone here on this rock. Um, so I don't want to fill out the entire light side of the face because this is a really kind of fitting skin tone. So take care to really, when you're looking at your reference, to see where you have a true highlight and what's a kind of light mid-tone. So making some mineral pigment and using rocks to make paint and ink is something I've really wanted to get into for a while because there's some people doing some really amazing work and people who get, uh, you know, who are into the concept of light fastness will be happy to know that mineral pigments uh, retain their colour uh, in many cases a lot more reliably than uh, botanical pigments. So these materials I'm using could also be ground to like totally pulverized and you could work with a binder to, to create some charcoal ink, which I've made in the past. It'll be super interesting. I'll, I'll take some of all of this stuff home and experiment with it a bit. But you could grind down this brick and have this nice kind of burnt sienna. You definitely need a binder because it's just, it's basically dust, so you need something to hold it together. And that's the big difference between mineral pigment and kind of the fluid plant-based pigment, which we've been working with together in ink naturally. And yeah, something I definitely want to experiment more with. And also, like the idea of connecting to place through art and knowing your art supplies, it just adds uh, another perspective and dimension when you start looking at the stones and your surrounding the earth. What else can you use to, to make your art with? 
so I've totally been kind of honing my awareness of um, botanical colors and even here there are all these amazing plants there's these dark rose hips which are so nice and pansy and wild roses growing at the beach and all these different things to use And I'll, I'll definitely be collecting some of that to take home and make some inks with, holiday inks. But the idea of, oh, I just love this, being somewhere. Uh, it would be cool if you were here too, Stina. But knowing that you're, you're over there somewhere, uh, not far away from here, perhaps sometimes at the same coastline and uh, making art from the materials available on this coastline straight at the place you know, taking reference photos is awesome but to do something really direct with the materials available at a place is just such a nice idea to once again yeah, connect with your subject and with your surroundings You can hear the, the waves lapping on the beach. People talking as they walk by. It's, it's all part of this now. Part of this moment shared with you all. My charcoal and rocks are rolling off of my canvas. resist the urge to blow bits off of here. and plays with it, blowing things away. collecting stones on the shore. People come here looking for amber. Do people walk up and down the coast looking for amber? Bernstein. So I understand all along the Baltic Sea there's a potential for this uh, amber to be washed up on the shore. sap of trees. I don't know if it's even petrified. It's kind of a stone, right? I guess they're probably different grades. Um, this is, I don't know, this is looking pretty cool. May almost, almost, almost be done with our impromptu holiday special here. Once we get back from holiday, we're packing to move. So just enjoying some days at the beach with the kids. Not much is happening and that's fine. Being in nature and the elements of the family. 
and it's super important. The kids are just so content spending so much time outside. as long as I allow live stream sessions. I'd love to be able to answer your questions. But if things work out here with the kids and with the common room and everything, then I hope I'll be able to be in the chat with you while you watch this. You can answer questions there. And if not, write to me. I love... Uh, being in contact with people. So if you have any insights, ideas, anything you'd like to share with me, then please get in touch. This is really cool. Um, yeah, so normally in, the, in our Tuesday night drawing sessions, we draw from 30 seconds to six minute portraits. So the longest I've ever drawn Stina has been six minutes, maybe four, I don't know. So it's nice to have a bit more time. And nice to draw something really big. saying in, um, oh, it's from a poem, I think, in German, it says, um, I may get the grammar wrong in this, I've never been much into grammar, but, um, der Wind, der Wind, das himmlische Kind, so it's like the wind, the wind, the divine child, uh, that Himmel is like air and heaven at the same time, so it's like the heavenly child, um, and the wind is just, contributing to this beachside portrait. I wonder if I can draw with chalk into the black. Oh wow, look at that, cool. Hadn't tried that yet. There are not really many highlights in here, but that's cool. Can do charcoal and then put chalk into it. Oh cool. Like drawing on a blackboard. So this is like our our spot at the beach. So are we returning here? And as it rains and the wind blows and days pass, I'll be able to Come and revisit you, Stina. See if you're still here. But I'm sure this is just a temporary visit. It has been lovely spending some time with you. And thank you for your beautiful words at the beginning. a day for now I think so thanks for watching and maybe next time you find some charcoal and big rocks then uh, you also just get inspired to make some art and um, I had a couple of kids just ask me if I could draw them on the rocks and you know there's endless opportunities to be creative and just to get immersed in your surroundings so um, I would love to see what you have drawn after watching this video you can hashtag ink naturally even though this wasn't ink and tag me on Instagram, I'd love to see your work. And thanks again, Stina. 
it's been lots of fun. <laughs>